I'm planning on entering Sky Arts Landscape Artist of the Year and this is step two on my journey. So yesterday I put in this uh, quick line drawing watercolour marker on A2 mixed media paper of the view from the top of 4th Street in Exeter, which is a city in the southwest of England. So um, I've noticed a couple of errors in, in my sketch. This church tower is too tall, but I kind of quite like it the way it is at the moment. So I'm going to leave that as it is. There are a couple of other minor errors here and there, but it's just a loose sketch. So we'll see what happens. Um, I've got my interactive acrylics on my palette here. Uh, burnt Umber, Cerulean Blue, Cad Red, Cad Yellow Light, Ultramarine Blue and Tinting White. Palette could do with a bit of a clean, but there we go. So I'm actually going to start off on the sky by just grabbing some pure Tinting White with this pretty large decorator's brush. And um, just going to put a little bit of water onto the paper and with horizontal brush strokes I'm just going to block in all of that sky with the white. You can see that's just taking me a few seconds to do. Now obviously I am moving the drawing around a fair bit and in some places it's pretty much gone but you know that's just life so we'll, we'll deal with that. I'm now adding uh, a little bit of the cerulean blue to the mixture, well, well to the white, there's no mixture until I added the blue. And uh, let's put some of that in. Across the top of the painting. And then we'll just feather the brush a little bit, um, just lightly down the down the sky there. And I think I can afford to go with a little bit more of the cerulean blue up at the top of the sky. That's perhaps a little bit too much, but. Um, might make for a little bit more drama in the painting. And then let's uh, just rinse the brush out a touch. Grab some more of the white. And we'll just blend that in. Now we've got a little bit of a run starting to develop there, so I'm just going to tickle the brush across the surface of the paper just to prevent that getting too out of hand. Now the most distant hills are pretty kind of bluish grey really, so I'm going to take some of that cerulean blue and mix it in with a little bit so adding a little bit more of that blue to the sky colour. Then I'm just going to add a little touch of the burnt umber. Let's get a bit more, a bit more of the white. A little touch of the ultramarine blue. And then we'll see what that looks like when we put that onto the paper. Not too bad. So the, the distant hills are sort of tree lined, but I definitely don't want to describe them in full. So I'm just kind of pushing up against the bristles a little bit to give me a slightly jagged edge. Let's get a bit more white 
into the mix to make it even paler. I'm painting, that's gone on a little bit thick, but I'm painting onto the, um, the wet first coat of paint. So I can still move this uh, second application of paint around a little bit. So let's um, take that same color and add just a little bit of the ultramarine blue. And we'll put in the the next kind of uh, line of hills just sitting in front of that first line. I've probably gone a little bit dark there as well, so we'll just spread that paint out a little bit. And then continuing with that color, but I'm just going to add a little touch of the yellow so that I can get a uh, Oops, get a dark green. Sorry, I must just let the cat's clawing at the door. I must just let him in. Okay, we're back. So um, I just mixed up that green. I'm just going to spray the surface of the painting with a bit of water there. And uh, again, just keeping the paint nice and thin. We'll hint at a line of trees. And then by moving the brush around fairly randomly, I can just kind of block in all of this area without get, getting into any detail at all at the moment. Um, so next up, let's take a look at this building here. So just washing my half inch flat brush out here. So it's kind of a, it's almost like a yellow ochre really. Um, let's grab some more of that white. Probably do with a bit more of that. Let's, um, let's just grab a bit more. So the tinting white has a slight iridescence to it. Um, and it's also more translucent than titanium white. But it's great for the initial stages of a painting because it isn't too, it's not too powerful. So um, you don't have to commit too heavily. So adding a little bit of cad yellow to that, we'll add a touch of the cad red, a little bit more yellow. Touch of the ultramarine blue. Get a bit of the burnt amber in there. And let's see what that looks like when we put it down on paper. Now, obviously, the buildings, as they go off into the distance, they do change in color. But at this stage, I'm not going to worry about that too much. So. quite a dramatic diagonal there. And then heading off down the hill, we've got the buildings. And so I'm actually just going to pull those off to the right a little bit more than I had it in my drawing. So I'm really just treating all of these buildings going down the left-hand side of the, the road as one giant building at the moment. I mean, they are pretty much all connected. There are a few alleyways, you know, off to the left, down that side of the road. But the, uh, there are multiple buildings connected together. So in some senses, they are one building, but, you know, each little section has its own character and design, typically. And then we'll come across here 
and again just block that in. So I used vertical brush strokes for the, the wall which is going off down the side of the street. So just to give us a little bit of variation, we'll go with horizontal brush strokes for this wall that's facing us. Now I've picked up a few little bits of dried paint in my palette there, off my palette there, sorry, which has got into the mix. But, you know, it's just that's just going to add a little bit of texture to the surface of this kind of stonework or brickwork. So I'm not concerned about that. And in fact, it's quite a happy little accident there, really. Um, so obviously there are going to be multiple features to go in, but uh, for now, I just want to block in some general areas of tone. Okay, so that's working reasonably well. I've pretty much completely lost the, the church tower, which was not intentional, but uh, there we go. So let's grab some more of the tinting white and uh, a little bit of the ultramarine blue. And I'll use that as a base color for the, the in general, much lighter buildings that are on the right hand side of the road. So again, ignoring any multitude of colors that we've got. So that's probably not light enough, I would say, but um, but that's okay. It's going to blend into the sky a little bit more than I would like for them. But for now, let's, uh, as I'm, I'm sorry, I'm thinking as I'm talking, <laughs> so I'm just kind of working it out. Let's add a little bit of burnt umber to that mixture. That's a bit more like it. So this is going to be hopefully fairly close in tone to some of the shadow colors in the buildings. And later on in the painting I'll be able to add some highlights which will stand out against this relatively dark background but um, I can block that in and then on another building here Got that angled roof there. And then let's um, let's grab some more of that white, mix it in here, some burnt umber, some of the red, and let's get a bit of water both onto the paper and uh, onto my palette just a little bit. Get the paint flowing a little more than it is. And then if I move across a touch, it's perhaps a little dark, but we'll go with it for now. It needs to come up to about, around about there. And come down at an angle. Now there's a bright pink storefront about there, but again, I'll, I'll deal with those sort of pops of color a little bit later on. And 
and while we've got this colour on the brush, just mixing it in with a little bit more white, I can... Uh, that, that roof should have extended up a bit more, but I can sort of block in the silhouette of that church tower as well. I'll stop it a little bit short so that I can put the castellations on the top later. Now to finish blocking in this building, I've just decided to switch colours to a kind of warmer, more yellowy brown. So again, yeah, this is just the very, very early stages, very crude treatment. Not really worrying about tone too much or even colour too much, but just, you know, getting in something of the right ballpark. Now that same colour is the right general sort of temperature for the pavement here on the right hand side. That little arc of pavement. Going down there. And then the road here is a rather cooler grey, so I'm going to add some of the uh, ultramarine blue to that mixture that I just used, and some more of the tinting white. Give that a fairly thorough mix. And again, we'll get a bit of water onto the paper. And uh, it's a little bit, a little bit too green, really. But it's not too, it's not too bad. Um, so, whoops, that bit was a bit dark. But you know, we'll go with, we'll go with what the brush is giving me for the moment. It's obviously just the first layer of paint, and uh, it's going to give me a base color to work against once all this is dry. So I'm going to leave that there to dry. Next stage will be to add some more tone and more modelling to some of the key areas. In particular, I'm quite interested in the cast shadow across the road in the foreground.